Welcome back. Today we're going to draw Gordon Ramsay. This is not a front view. It's He's turned slightly to our left, and his head is tipped down a bit. So we're going to begin by thinking a little bit about the position of his cranium, which is going to be a circle. Um, and then we're going to draw the face extending down from the cranium. The jaw is going almost to the outside. There's just a little bit of cranium probably behind the, behind the jaw. And probably want to draw this about as large as it appears on the screen. The eye line is going to be a little below the middle because his head is tipped down. And the line of symmetry is going to be slightly to the left because of the turn of his head. So what we're trying to do right from the start is, is set up a volume that relates to the to the volume that we're looking, that, that we're seeing here. Um, probably even less cranium sticking out in the, in the back. Um, and I'm going to start by just sort of indicating the bottom of his brow ridge. Um, the bottom of his nose and the line between the lips, about a third of the way down, maybe a little further. So this is the basic structure. Um, notice my lines are fluid but kind of broken. I'm not doing any continuous outlines. I haven't committed to anything yet. And I'm going to proceed by blocking in the line of his shoulders. Notice that the line of his shoulders, if we extended it, um, this line would go just below his bottom lip if we curve that around. So that might be helpful. But you see what just throwing that shoulder line in, what it does is it allows us, what we're trying to do is create a drawing with no detail, no specificity, but where we can begin to read the pose, which is really similar to what we try to achieve in a figure drawing with what's called the gesture. So very basic, blocking things in, coming to terms with the structure. He's got a big pile of hair on the top of his head, so we can put that up there. And another real clue to the pose is the position of his ears. You'll recall that the ears belong level with the top of the eyes in a, in a level-headed pose. When the when the chin tilts down, the ear raises a lot. So I see his ear. Um, here's how I'm going to think about it. There's the top of his ear. There's his brow line. You see how his top of his ear is closer to his hairline than to his brow line. So it's up around there. And it's around the same height on the left as it is on the right. So it's way up here. The bottom of his ear is level with the bottom of his eye sockets. You see that? Eye sockets, bottom of the ear. What we're doing now, we're giving our brains enough kind of visual cues to begin to see the position of the head. And that's the most important first step. And there are a lot of different strategies for doing that, a lot of different shorthands. But um, 
I'm just trying to keep it really simple. And hopefully you can kind of feel that without this looking anything like Gordon Ramsay, it kind of looks like a head in that position. The next step is going to be to shadow map this. And we're going to see that we're going to bring a shadow edge along the forehead. It, the cheekbone projects out and drives that shadow off to the left. And um, you don't even need to make this line as dark as I'm making it. You can make it very faint. Um, but that's our main shadow shape. That's our primary form shadow. And I'm going to go ahead and do a first shading. This is lefty shading. You're most you're going to go the other direction and just fill in that shadow shape. Secondary shadows are inside the eye socket here. Um, under the nose, cast shadow under the nose, and to the left of the ala. Cast shadow of the upper lip. And just a little bit of cast shadow around the upper margin of this eye. And finally, we're going to put in, um, it's not a true shadow, but it can be helpful to think of, well, here's this little shadow at the outside corner of this, this eye. Then I'm going to shade the irises because they are, the irises, remember, are sort of like holes into the white of the eye, and so we can throw a little shadow down roughly where we think the irises need to be. And that's going to allow us to read the separation between the eyes as well as Gordon's gaze, or which way Gordon is looking. So now I'm going to erase all my construction lines, and I'm going to take a quick break on my end. OK, we're going to get into some details now. Um, let's not get too hard on details until we've we can start to define some of these features a little more. Um, so I, I threw a cast shadow here behind the ala. What I haven't done yet is the the form shadow that's around the whole right side of the nose is slightly in shadow. So we're going to shade that down. And there's just a tiny bit of shadow along the bottom edge of his nose, but it's, it's got a lot of reflected light bouncing up into there. Um, we can't see his nostrils because his head's tipped down, but we can see a transition here from the from the sort of ball end of his nose to the ala, which is going to come up around like this. And we can see the top edge of the ala. This is the lightest pressure. We're showing a plane change in full light, so we want to just barely indicate that.
and there's this funny darkening right above the ala on this side. And one thing I remind you every time we do this is um, this is a good time to double check. Check your distance between the top of the ala and the bottom of the eye socket. And if you've got a ton of space in here, you're doing something wrong. So you see how his, his eye socket actually comes down in this pose level with the top of the ala. Do you see what I mean? Like we're gonna go, if we go from the top of the ala straight across to the left, we're almost uh, meeting the bottom of the eye socket. Not quite, but very close. Um, one thing I'm emphasizing today is if you've already drawn your eye like this with a nice dark circle around the iris. Um, don't, just erase it. Can you see how vague my eye is? That gives me a lot of freedom. After the drawing starts to come together, I can, I can move things around a sixteenth of an inch either way and not even have to erase because I have not yet gone, made any definite decision about the eye placement. And I'm actually feeling right now like the eye is a little too low. It's sort of crowding the nose. So only now am I going to go a little more definite, try to draw the shape of that eyelid. And I can move, as, as I define that eye, I can very slightly move it upward. You see what happened to the center of this eye? It just bumped up about an eighth of an inch. And that's without doing any erasing or correcting. I'm just sort of, as, as I darken things, I'm letting myself be more specific about their locations. Here's this deep shadow inside the bridge of the nose. There's a little accent at the outside of the white of the eye right there, and a little faint shadow under the eyelid. And here we're going to go into the eyebrow, which kind of arches up like this. And as I get clearer about this form, I can start to see where that cheek needs to end. Now I've defined the eye socket pretty well, so I can see that I need a little more, a little wider space of light along this cheek, um, which means moving this shadow shape out slightly. And now I'm going to darken with some contour shading or form shading. Darken and try to get this cheekbone to turn from the shadow into the light. So this is the soft edge here. And then I'm going to do some sharpening strokes along here to get this to come to this abrupt end in front of the background. Um, this form shadow continues up in front of the ear, but it, it stays very narrow. And there's less reflected light as we come to the top of the form because think where the reflected light is coming from. It's coming from his shoulder. So as we come up here, we're going to have less of it.
and his cheek, because his head is tipped down, that's causing the cheekbone to peak above the corner of the eye, like way up here. Something like that. So the spacing between the eyes is really critical in any portrait. Um, this is a good chance for you to sort of take a little measurement, double check that. Um, I'm going to give you an approximation. These eyes are almost the same size because the, the pose is fairly frontal. But so if this is an eye width, put that one too far over. Um, this is about another eye width. And this is about two thirds of an eye width. So that means the space between his eyes is about one and two thirds, which is very wide. So be sure that you put this eye far enough to the right. Um, his head is fairly level, so there's no appreciable drop as we move from left to right. So keep the eyes on around the same level. I can see that I need to raise mine a little because um, I want it to end up a little higher. And now I'm going to start with that upper lash line and the crease of the upper lid. And once again, I just moved that dark of the eye just up a little, and now I'm going to define the iris in the new location. This time I am going to have to erase just a little. There's the pupil centered on the iris with a little scoop cut out of it on the upper right to indicate the highlight. And here's that arched eyebrow on this side. And a little half tone to define the lower eye socket. Okay, uh, we'll take another break in a minute, but we're going to, one of the most distinctive features of Gordon Ramsay is the, the kind of furrows around his, um, the bridge of his nose. So we're going to do some very light half tone, try to place some of these creases. And notice that his eyebrow is kind of centered along the brow ridge. And we're just going to place these very faintly. We can darken them later. Um, but he's got some pretty major um, forehead wrinkles.
So you see that instantly looks a lot more like him, I think. I'm going to do a little coarse shading on the tip of his nose. Get that nose to turn a little. OK, here we go. Now, a lot of people are having trouble placing the mouth. So let's look carefully at this. So locate. Everyone, be quiet and listen, please. We're going to locate the tip of the nose. And notice that the philtrum is just slightly to the right of the tip of the nose. So I'm going to just indicate the philtrum. And then the center portion of the mouth is right under the philtrum. It's way over here. And the... The wings of the mouth are essentially straight, and then they curve up just a little bit at the outside like that. He's got like a, the faintest hint of a smile. Um, it might help us to draw this labial fold before we draw the corner of the mouth. So let's make this little S curve here very lightly. Notice it's falling along an angle that's about 60 degrees from, from horizontal like that. And then we've got a fit the corner of the mouth inside this pocket here like that. And he's got, there's the top of the chin. Notice the top of the chin, his chin rides a little bit behind his bottom lip, so the chin is going to be a little bit to the right of that. And his chin has a slight asymmetry. It's a little lower on the left. You see that? OK, now we're coming up. Notice that the angle of the jaw is way down below the corner of the mouth. Even though his head is tipped down, we're still he's got a very heavy jawline. And we're going to do some core shadows along this transition. And in order to give a little sense of the texture here, I'm gonna, not going to make my shadow edge completely smooth. I'm just going to randomly I'm gonna make these little extensions to the shadow edge, um, which is going to give us some sense of the texture of the chin. And we're going to go much darker on the neck. That's going to bring out this nice little reflected light along the jowl here. I could go a little darker also with the cast shadow under the nose.
And as often happens, uh, there's a lot of reflected light coming up onto the bottom of the chin. So we're almost losing our shadow shape here, but it's still there. It's a little faint. So let's put that in. And notice that along here we don't we have a hard overlap right until about here and then it turns into a soft overlap. You see what's happening there? It's sort of like there's the cheekbone, there's the side of the neck. So our our hard overlap ends before we get to the cheekbone. And this is all half tone over here. We have a nice little darkening along the inside sort of hollow of the cheekbone here. And this half tone sort of continues um, so notice that the eye the hollow under the eye socket forms this little crevice that continues um, and merges with the hollow under the cheekbone you see that and having noticed that on the right, we might look for it on the left, and sure enough, it's very subtly there on the left as well. But notice I'm pressing very, very lightly here. We do not want to go too dark on something like that. Let's zoom out now on Gordon so we can get a better look. Now to get the texture on the forehead, you'll notice that we sort of simplified this shadow edge before, but I'm going to erase my shadow map there and I'm going to make sure I have enough sort of creases passing over into the shadow like that. And then watch what I do here. I'm going to, I'm shading the bottom of it, each crease like this and then this cast shadow edge is curving around into the crease and really showing the texture by the movement of this shadow edge and I'm I'm simplifying it I'm making it simpler in my drawing than it is in the photograph, but I think you can see what I'm talking about. We're sort of imagining that each little section of the form shadow curls under into the crease and then comes out from it again like that. And you see how that really makes the, the texture here much more legible than it was? Okay, I'm going to add a little extra half tone at the inside of this eye socket. So where, wherever you are in your drawing right now, um, we're going to do the hair together. So you can always come back to this other stuff, but let's see if we can address the problems of this hair. Um, we've got this brightly lit lock which is kind of curving around partially overlapping the forehead 
And then we've got this kind of sassy little upturned bang. It's kind of coming over like this. So when you're drawing hair, the thing you want to get away from is thinking about individual hairs. And what we're working towards is learning to recognize these sort of clumps of hair. So there's, there's a big piece clumping off to the right. There's a big piece clumping to the left. Um, here's another one behind it clumping to the left. Um, hopefully you can all kind of see what I'm looking at here. And remember, succeeding at this is contingent on the fact that you've accurately kind of blocked in where all these pieces are going to fit. Um, that was an earlier step. And back here, we've got this little clump coming around the corner and these sort of overlapping waveforms. Um, his hair's got a lot of body, maybe a little bit of product holding all that together. And because he's very blonde and under strong photo lights, we can leave a lot of this white. Um, we're just going to bring out a few of these half tones to separate some of these clumps. And that's about it for the hair. Pretty simple. I'm going to throw a little first shading over this side of the head, even on the hair. Um, as usual, I made him look a little fatter than he is. And watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to shave a few pounds off but just by bringing in this one contour a little closer to the shadow edge. You see what effect that has? It's like dramatic reduction, um, less than an eighth of an inch, probably about... Um, probably a little more than a sixteenth. But it makes a big difference on the overall effect. And for the ear, we've already blocked in this shape, so I'm going to turn what was a series of straight edges into a series of curves. And shade it down because it's all that's in full shadow. And the other ear is more we can read the features of this ear, the helix and the shadow. This is the shaded inside of the helix. Um, here's the tragus and the anti-helix. And a little more. The main thing here is just shading under the helix. There's really no shadow to speak of on the ear lobe. And I'm about done with my job on this lesson. I'll give you some more time to finish.
Um, the last thing I'm going to do is just define this shirt collar a little bit. Um, and the blazer. Maybe a little half tone on the neck, not a full shadow. Remember, the full shadow ends way over here. That's going to do it for the video portion of this lesson. Thank you to all my new subscribers out there. And we'll see you next time.